Sup, heathens. I'm Happy Viking, and I'm here to make you awesome, one frothy pint of metal at a time. So drink up. Aelstorm and Tear. A rambunctious pair of seafaring, freewheeling fighters, fuckers, and fornicators, ravishing and ravaging the European coastlines for kicks, shits, and giggles. Why? Because they love it. They love their music, they love their art, and they love their adrenaline-addled antics. Same with all metalheads, because after all, metal is about passion. Zesty, nacho-cheesy, super robot anime-style passion. The kind of passion that boils the blood in your veins, sets your beard on fire, and makes you feel like a jacked-up combination of Billy Mays and the Incredible Hulk. Because that's what metal is about, having serious love and dedication for everything you do. Just like Ailstorm and Tear. Man, oh man, Ailstorm and Tear. You know what would be awesome? If they teamed up. Could you imagine that? If these two brass ball bagging sky fucker juggernauts teamed up for a big old tour. Oh sweet, buttery Jesus. Oh yes, they did. To promote their sophomore album Black Sails at Midnight, Ailstorm started up a kick-ass campaign paved with blood and rum called the Black Sails Over Europe Tour. With Tyr and friends in tow, they sailed off to the European mainland and brutally molested the ear canals of every metalhead they could find in trademark glorious fashion. Along with that vigorous venture, 1,000 accompanying CDs were released as well, naturally featuring terrific tracks from Illstorm and Tyr and... and Head Evoke? Head Evoke? Who's this peppy little spitfuck of a tag-along kid? What are these guys doing here on this album alongside boozy buccaneers and cool-headed conquerors? What is Head Evoke? Where does it come from? Why do they have more tracks on the CD than Ailstorm itself does? Ah, bugger, let's just listen to one of their songs. Huh. You know what? I really enjoy a good folk tune every now and then, just mellows me out something wonderful. Of course, I have no idea how Head Evoke had anything to do with the Black Sails Over Europe tour, but whatever. Play me another one of theirs, computer screen. <laughs> Dear God. If anything, it is now painfully obvious why Head of Oak was on the tour, on the album, and on the summit of Sex, Blood, and Victory Mountain, standing tall alongside Tear and Ailstorm despite their obscurity. Because they fucking rock. Head of Oak is a Dutch folk metal band from Arnhem, formed in 2002. They bench press boulders, devour oak trees, and play music that will resonate within your very soul. One moment they could lull you into repose with an acoustic nature ballad, and the next moment they can invigorate you with a fist-pounding invocation of an ancient god. Or hell, maybe they'll just sing about how awesome beer is. Head of Oak does it all. Why? Because they're awesome, and they love all that shit. And that's the big thing here, they love all that shit. Sure, virtually every other folk metal band out there loves beer, nature, and mythology, sure, but Head of Oak will, without fail, get you just as stoked on that shit as they are. Maybe it's their powerful naturalistic tone, or maybe it's just the sheer testicular fortitude they exhibit, but Head of Oak does an awesome job of conveying and transferring the sweet, burning passion they have for these subjects to the listener. It is a scientific impossibility not to get pumped up and energized by Head of Oak's thundering drums, booming voices, and mammoth chops. Allow me to demonstrate the invigorating effects of Head of Oak on the average Joe. Instant life. Most of this wicked energy transference comes from their vocals because, holy crap, did you hear them vocals? That's two guys bellowing at once, choir style producing a tone like that of the calling horn whose sonorous timbers will announce the coming of Ragnarok. It's fucking majestic. And it's a nice change of pace from all the other folk metal bands that can only muster some kind of harsh, gurgly hacking up of a hairball vocals. Elvedi and Zephram, Moonsorrow, I'm looking at you. In fact, Hedevoke is the only metal band I can think of that sings like this, period. 
Damn, we need more singers like this. Fuck this screamy soprano and cookie monster shit. Ludicrous bass is the way of the future. Based on what limited information I could dig up on Head Evoke and its origins, the big badass voice work was one part of how the band started. According to an interview with a guitarist, the two founders, Joris and Sabas, both had the idea to start a metal band with low male vocals and themes related to their home province of Gelderland. Then they both met at a local pub and essentially said, fuck yeah bro, and decided to get that shit up and running. And not soon after, four other guys joined in and said, let's rock the fuck out for Gelderland. After a demo, an album, and an EP, they got signed to who else but motherfucking Napalm Records. Okay, I swear this is going to be my last Napalm Records review for a while. Gotta give other labels some of my red-hot reviewer love, after all. And then these guys of Glorious Gelderland released another awesome album in 2008, and an even better album in 2010, cementing them as the greatest thing to come out of Gelderland since Gelderland. Gelderland, Gelderland, giggity, giggity, Gelderland. Sorry about that, but these guys fucking love their home province of fucking Gelderland. Like, possibly quasi-romantically. And it's starting to rub off on me. It's not like other bands where you can occasionally forget where they're from. Head of Oak never lets you forget that they're from fucking Gelderland. Seriously, I don't speak a word of Dutch, and I know for a fact that at least five of their songs are about Gelderland. Hot damn. What a crazy bunch of patriots those guys are. Not that there's anything wrong with that, I have no problem with Patriots, just so long as they're the good, friendly kind of Patriot, like this. And not this. Thankfully, Head of Oak is firmly in the former category, and their love for Gelderland really is contagious, although it could just be me. I have that sort of personality, you see. Hell, one day I listened to nothing but Corpy Clanny CDs, and the next day I applied for Finnish citizenship and drank Kosu until I nearly died, so make of that what you will. But damn, I am curious about Gelderland. Hold on. Hello, tourism? Yeah, I want to know why Gelderland is so gosh darn amazing. You have a bacon tree? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Damn it, Gelderland, why are you so awesome? But yes, Head of Oak, each and every one of those guys are possessed of a great love for their culture, history, and music, which is righteous and kick-ass. But a close-knit circle of six highly passionate people will inevitably run into problems, one of them being the sheer overload of ideas. A good number of their songs seem to have been made by throwing everyone's ideas into a blender and seeing what happens. Will it blend? That is the question. Most of the time it blends very well, but sometimes you get odd transitions or abrupt changes in pacing or other such audio speed bumps. And as a result, Head of Oak feels scatterbrained and disorganized. They're trying to compress a metric fuckton of ideas and emotion into 10 5 minute tracks per album. And occasionally it doesn't quite go together so smoothly. See what I mean? Although, naturally, this melting pot of sheer creative energy does have its advantages. It produces a lot of variety. Head of Oak could be crushing one moment and mellow the next. It could be glorious one moment and menacing the next. Head of Oak, as I said before, does it all. All in the noble effort to get you really pumped up for Dutch mythology. Awesomeness. In fact, I believe they have a music video that does a good job of electrifying the soul with such mythological goodness. So let's take a peek and a listen at their fresh summer jam about the sea goddess Nehalania entitled Nehalania. The video starts with a rushing riff and a crashing wave as the big lugs rock out in a nondescript black void, presumably because their ridiculous masculinity has sucked all the light out of their immediate environment like a herd of black holes. And then, after a brief acoustic interlude, they unleash their hymen-shattering rallying call with a resounding shout of... Oh god, I'm so fired up right now. The veins in my neck burn with steam and fury. I want to wrestle Siberian tigers. I want to carve my face into the Matterhorn with my fists. I want to eat a neutron star. But what's happening in the video? What extraordinarily awesome things are happening in this video as a result of this song? Oh. 
five guys are saying goodbye to their wives and praying to Nehalenia for safety and blessings during their perilous travels. Well, that kind of mellowed me out some. Was this video made with a completely different song in mind? The song in the band itself in this video is causing earthquakes with how hard it's rocking, while the rest of the video is solemn, respectful, and dignified, and it kind of leaves me scratching my head. I'm not sure whether I'm supposed to be stoked or not. I'm kind of in a weird equilibrium between both stoked and not stoked. Schrodinger stoked. It's like Schrodinger's cat, except with more excitement and less ambiguous animal cruelty. But like I said, sometimes with Head of Oak, you get stuff that just doesn't blend. And the video does a good job of illustrating that. You have a song full of bombast and enthusiasm paired with a video that is reverent and quietly emotional. It's like having Motorhead make a video with a Sunday school class. But whatever. In the bigger scheme of things, this is a petty grievance. So let me give my final thoughts. Head of Oak is an awesome band, perfectly worthy of rocking alongside the likes of both Tear and Ailstorm. Even when their enthusiasm gets the better of them and takes their music in sudden, unusual directions, Head of Oak still kicks almighty ass. They play their guts out and stop at nothing to get you rip-roaring and ready to rock alongside them for the glory of the motherland. Fuck yeah. They are working on a new album, which I am very pleased about. I don't know any details, except that founding member Sabas will be leaving the band after its completion to pursue other ventures. And no, I did not shed manly tears of sadness upon hearing this news. What makes you say that? Shut up! Regardless, I wish him and Head of Oak the best of luck. May you rock yourselves into the annals of history, metal sons of Gelderland. I'm Happy Viking, and you've just been given your recommended dosage of heavy metal. Now if you excuse me, I got a date with a bacon tree. Change both, change back and it's not even